day when the trumpet shall blast, and we all shall be caught up with him in the air, and to abide with him forever. If that is your belief and expectation, shout amen. amen. Dear Lord God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the life in thy word. Thank you for the power of your word. Holy Spirit, the hour has come, now is. Inspire your word with signs and wonders. Grant unction. Grant deliverance. Bring rejoicing of salvation. Prick our heart with conviction of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. And Father, all glory shall forever be yours. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. And everyone says amen. amen. Today's message is something I encourage everyone to please open up your heart to receive that which God has for all of us today. This is not the time for anyone to be distracted because the word of God is coming with power to save, to heal, and to deliver. You believe that? Say, thank you, Jesus. I begin by sharing a vision that God gave me a few days ago. And with that, the Spirit of God began to say, this is how to this service we go. And what was the vision all about? I saw a huge estate, a great mansion, extremely beautiful. And a lady carried a set of keys and about to enter. The way the vision looks, it was like the mansion belongs to her. So it was like she was joyfully going in to open and take a possession. Somebody say, take your possession. She got the keys. She was ready to possess it. And suddenly, somebody obstructed her from getting in, saying, you can't get in. And the argument began. She began to claim, this belongs to me. I should have it. I've got the keys. I'm prepared for it. Anyhow, she, she struggled her way into the estate. The moment she got in, the, the whole estate raised a voice like an echo saying she can't handle it. She can't handle it. She can't handle it. And within her, she began to find the reason why she could not handle it. You know, the way vision operates is like, Something was challenging a right of possessing the mansion. At the same time, she knew why. And that, what was coming from within her was she was not matured enough. Somebody say immaturity. And based on this vision, the title of today's prophetic message is spiritual maturity let's say it together and that's why this message is very crucial to your life what's the title of today's uh, prophetic message spiritual maturity and the spirit of god began to tell me the lady is a type of the body of christ the church there is a great estate great blessing great mansion that God has set for the church. We've been given the keys to possess great things, great treasures. But the trouble is, 
a lot of people are not matured. Someone say immaturity. Let's say it again. You see, take an instant, that baby now that fell. The baby fell and was looking up to her mom to carry her. If an elderly person fall, would you be looking for somebody? What do you do? You quickly adjust yourself. To the baby, it is okay to even cry in the midst of gardening like this. To an adult, even if you are feeling the pain, what do you do? This is an example of immaturity. Is this the way, even though we are elderly or old in age, in years, but that is how you react. Anyhow, you can explode. It shows you are still immature. You can't handle good things. It shows that person is still immature. But a sense of maturity, we know that whatever thing you are going through, you don't have to cause confusion around you. We're going deeper. We're going to touch some areas. It's a key thing for us to understand about maturity. Because there are a lot of blessings set for God's people. But the trouble is, we are not matured. When the voice echoed against this lady, the type of the church, saying she can't handle it. And she knew why. Because something in her said she's immature. When you talk about spiritual maturity, there are a lot of things to understand. Sometimes ago, I got a call from an elderly person whom many years back we worked together in the same company. It wasn't that he was the head of the place, but he has destroyed many lives. If you come in as a young graduate, it will frustrate you. It will make sure you are fired. And to worsen it all, he was also an elder in a, in a gospel church. And now listen. If you are listening, say yes. So, when I heard that he was an elder in the church, I said, this is easy. I'll be his friend. I will work on him so that he will know how to handle people. He even dealt with me myself. Very damaging. But you know what? I make sure that I didn't leave the, I was in fire because of him. That area, I bind it. That I will leave when I'm ready to leave. Until God lifted me up and promoted me, I left the place. I, I forgot about it. Not too long ago, the man called me. Last year, some, some times ago. I wonder how he got to how he got my number. And he began to pray. When the moment he identified I was the receiver of the call, in the name of Jesus, God will bless you. I was first saying amen, amen. When the prayer continues 10, 15 minutes, I wasn't saying amen again because I, I didn't know what he was up to. So just to, because my wife knows him, I put him on the speaker and said, should I say amen or keep quiet? Because this man, hmm, this call, I suspect this call. So anyhow, when he was done, I said, thank you for your prayers. Anything, he said, he just want to bless me. I said, thank God for the blessing. And sometimes he will call, all he will do again is to bless. He will call, he will bless. Until one of our friends called me, the person who gave him my number, and said, as so, 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 and so called you, I say, yes. He said, do you know what happened? Did he bless you? I say, yes. Why? I said, I didn't ask him. 
He said, he did the same, but this other guy, he will want to know, before you bless me, let me know why. At one point, he became very sick, and he fell into coma. Five years before that time, he fell into coma. And at that time, when they were struggling for his life, under life support, he appeared before the, before the angelic court. Ready? Once he had passed by the angel, it would take God to return back. In the natural, he would just give up. Even though naturally they were battling on his life. And so, some people that were behind him, the angel was, once he opened the book of life, the name is not there, we just say, depart and come and see wailing. He looked behind him. Within the short time he got there, the queue was long. That shows how many souls passing by within seconds. If you survive an hour, you are favored by God. And oftentimes, we don't appreciate this. So, it's according to the man, he said he was jittering. Almost everybody depart, depart, and thrown to hell. And when he got to his own time, as the book of life was open, what appeared was all his self-righteousness. And the angel said, you can't enter heaven by your self-righteousness. And as he was pleading, ah, let me go and amen, let me go and amen. The angel said, once you are here, no amendment. And suddenly, a drop of blood dropped on that book of life. Saying, that is like a pardon from God, saying, let him back. And suddenly, the man woke up here, and the medical team thought they were the one walking. He said, yes, we, we, got, we, 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 we got the pulse. We got this, aha. And they, and they kept struggling. Yes, give him the more. They didn't know that it was the power of the blood. When this man woke up, he moved about telling believers, you don't know the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. That we just call it and call it in vain. He said, when the, a drop of blood dropped on that book of life, it was like an earthquake. The whole place tumbled. The angels couldn't stand it. And that is the same blood you are just talking. And you. May God give us deep revelation of the efficacy of the blood of Jesus. And you can see, it shows immaturity. May God give us the efficacy of the power of the blood of Jesus. Somebody said there is power in the blood of Jesus. Somebody said there is life in the blood of Jesus. Somebody said there is deliverance in the blood of Jesus. So when his self-righteousness showed up, he said within that twinkling of an eye, all he was seeing was, you know, he, he he used to fight everybody. He would, he would strive against everybody. And he said, when the, all his self-righteousness showed up, he said the names of those people he, he, he was striving with when he was on heart, he showed up. I said, no wonder he called me. Maybe my name too appeared there. <laughs> so your names appear too in heaven. Don't worry. I pray it will appear for good. Yeah. In Jesus' name. He said, all the names of those people he was striving with show up. And they say, issue unresolved. Issue unresolved. Even his wife's name showed up. <laughs> this is a very serious case, brethren. Even his wife's name showed up. And so, you know, the way the things of God operate, he was able to recall the names. He first settled with his wife that was standing and weeping by the bed. He said, I don't weep. Uh, forgive me. He said, ah, what do I forgive you? We want you to be okay. He said, ah, this is not a matter of okay. I don't know when they will ask me to come back. Let me, I, I'm here to make amends. So, 
He began to look for numbers. He got my number. I was one of those. He made I mean, He was just blessed. He knew that I won't cause trouble with him anyway. I was just saying amen. But when the prayer became too strong, I was afraid to say amen. What am I saying? It, the, the, when the, because of unresolved issues, strife. And remember the Bible says, where there is strife and envy, all evil works will abound. Strife and envy will open door to all kinds of evil work. And what the man understood was, if each time he felt he was right and every other person was wrong, and so he was ready to fight it anytime. But he, from his conclusion, after, you know some people that he went to reconcile with, they caused more trouble for him. Say, don't talk to me. Don't do this to me. If you want to bless and say, you bless. No, no, no. You can't say that to me. While he was trying to do that, all he was telling them is that don't, all those things I've done to you, I was, it was because I was immature. But people say, you're an elderly somebody of, in your 70s. He said, ah, I was immature. So the conclusion of his misbehavior, even as a child of God, was immaturity. So it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter who you are. You can still be spiritually immature. And if you are immature, that will open doors to a lot of troubles. He cannot handle people. He cannot handle relationship because he's simply immature. Let me tell you another case. I got a call from an auntie. This is about family now. Two aunties of mine. I grew up to know that they don't talk to each other. From the time I knew them, they don't, if they see themselves, the way they will hide themselves, nobody, it was me that said, ah, this thing must stop. I tried to talk to both of them. I got some deadly arrows. It was God that saved me. I just leave them. One of them called me last year. He said, do you know what? I said, what? I started talking with Auntie T. I say, hey, after 61 years. Ah, you, you are one of them too. You are saying what? <laughs> Your own is, is adding up too. It's adding up. Don't worry. You say, what? Let me tell you how it began. What we grew up to know is this. You know our, Afri our African tradition. Even if, it's some, some, even if somebody in the family is one day older than you, they will ask you to respect that person and call auntie or, or whatever or brother. You understand what I'm saying? Lift. Uh -huh. When both of them were 10 years old, they were eight months apart. And they said, this is your senior sister. You should be respecting her and calling her auntie. Ah, he said, God forbid. We have the same age. Eight months apart? No. What of if I choose not to talk to her? At least I will escape calling the auntie. So if I pass by, there's nothing like auntie or anything. They force her to say it, she will not. When she was younger, they will beat her. They will compel her to say it. She will still not say it. Say, I won't say it. Say, over my dead body. Until last year. And when she even called me to break the news because she knew how hard I've tried. And my response was, rather than rejoicing with her, she thought I would be excited to hear the news. I said, after 61 years. You know what? She raged at me right away. What do you mean? Who are you, small boy? <laughs> that means at a 10, we... For 61 years, as at last year, both of them were 71 years. So she raged at me. I said, okay, it's still there in your body. It's not gone yet. <laughs> Until early this year, she now called. 
and started apologizing for her reaction. I said, ah, you know me, it doesn't matter to me anyway. He said, but you know what? And unfortunate thing, within this period of 61 years, both of them so-called born again, Holy Ghost feel. The Holy Ghost we receive in this generation, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid. If it's the real Holy Ghost, hey, the first thing, it, it will break you down, convince you, you can't eat, you can't sleep until you set to it. But this is generation, you still be blasting in tongues and you are keeping malice. I say, hey, is this Holy Ghost? And she said, I said, why are you calling back? She said, I decided to wait on the Lord. And as I was waiting on the Lord of fasting in prayers, the Holy Spirit said, this man that will even help you settle this quarrel, you are also quarreling with him. I hope his own too will not start adding up now. Number one, why the Holy Spirit was saying that the Spirit of God now opened our eyes to see the damages that have been done to the family, to our life, to our children, to our grandchildren within the 61 years. She broke down crying. The children, well educated, but really in trouble. And when I mean trouble, trouble. The grandchildren too, if you know what they are going through, you will wonder why. And the Spirit of God said, you open the door. And the Spirit of God opened her eyes to, to the other sister, saying, look at this situation too. Not only to you, your children and grandchildren, because of the door you opened. So she was explaining this to me. Say, do you know this 61 years you mentioned is not making sense to me? I look at my life for those period of time, it was a mess. It transferred to uh, their children to the point that now to the second generation, the children of these two ladies, they don't greet. So also their grandchildren. But apart from that, that has caused a lot of great disaster in their lives. On our ways, many of us, we open a lot of doors for the enemy to have fleet because of immaturity. Look at somebody right to and say, get matured. Yes. Listen. Two things have plagued the body of Christ. Two things. And those two things, we must triumph over them. The first is shallowness. Say that with me. Shallowness. Say it again. Shallowness. And the second is backsliding. Say it again. Backsliding. Remember that scriptures. He that thinketh is standard should take heed lest he fall. Say that with me. He that thinketh is standard should take heed lest he falls. That is it. You think you stand. It's not that you are standing. But that is the trouble today. Many of us think we are standing in the law. Whereas you have not even learned how to crawl. You've not even learned how to sit. But in your mind, because of years and months you have added to claim that you've been born again, you feel you are standing. That's why the Bible says, if you think that you are standing, be careful, otherwise you fall. So the danger today is a lot of force we have a false sense of our stand with God. Someone say a false sense of our stand with God. Oftentimes you think you are standing. Oftentimes you think you are matured or you are growing in the law. But in most times, no. A lot of believers today, very shallow you only know how to cry out for your needs. The Bible says, this is the generation that seek thy face. That seek thy face, O Jacob. That is, there is a generation that seek God's face. And there is a generation that will seek his hand. 
There is difference between the two. Somebody seeking my hand, you are only interested in what you can have or what you can get from me. But somebody seeking my face, you are interested in my well-being. You want to give, uh, you want to give me something? I want to give you something, and in my, I, I'm doing my face like this. I'm frowning. <clears throat> take it. You know, somebody who doesn't care, who is interested in my hand, you just take it, say thank you. Even if you are not happy, that's your own trouble. But somebody who is interested in my webbing, if I'm doing, if I'm, if you, are you happy? Are you okay? Is it okay if I have it? He's interested, not just having it, but in my well-being. The gen- this generation is only interested in what we can get from God. God, too, has his own heart desire. We are not ready to, we are not mindful of his heart desire, but only mindful of our own desire. That is simply immaturity. Is that not how children do? You give your child a lollipop, and you are asking, can I have a chair? He will hide it. Whereas you are the giver. You can give, and if he finishes that, you say, daddy, I want some more. But why is taking it, you say, can I have, he's hiding it from you. And listen, your children is not interested whether you have been fired, whether you have no job or not. You say, daddy, back to school. You know that bag, that bag like this, when I put it on, and you are thinking of how to pay your bills. It's, and you are thinking of how, the child, how that child can still manage that bag for at least one semester before you buy another. But he doesn't care whether you have money or not, whether bills are paid or not. He's only interested in get me what I want. It's because of immaturity, we only seek his hands and not his face. The trouble with this generation is we are shallow. And that's why the kingdom of darkness is advancing. That's why the forces of hell are raging the more. That's why the forces of hell, they are releasing their most deadly weapons. Because we can't handle them, we are shallow. And the second thing that has plagued the body of Christ is backsliding. Rather than walking with God, we are walking backward. And the trouble is, we are contented with that. That is the danger. You still have the first sense to feel you are still a child of God. And the reason why some people come to church is to socialize, which is very good, but that is not the primary reason. When they call the disciples... Check the scripture. The Bible says he called them to be with him. So the calling of God is to be with him. In that Isaiah chapter 51, he said, look at Abraham, your father. Look at Sarah, your mother. I call him alone. Alone. It's a lonely walk with God. Because you alone will stand before the throne of grace. And So, because of shallowness and backsliding, we miss out of great things of God. There are two deadly weapons that the devil is also using against the body of Christ. We've talked about two things that that is plaguing the body of Christ. What are those two things? Shallowness and backsliding. The two deadly weapons that is destroying the body of Christ is no deep affection for God. Say that again. Say it out loud. And the second is no commitment. No commitment. No deep affection. That deep love for God is not just there. And no sense of commitment. This is the generation I see that you say you are born again. You have nothing doing to promote the kingdom of God. All you need to do is your job, your career. Those things will soon pass away. That's not your main reason why you're on earth. 
as good as they are, there is not the main reason. Even on your job, you should represent God there. You should be 